From havens for pirates to natural habitats for rare and wonderful animals, islands are some of the most iconic parts of our world and they can be the same for your world. So today, let's talk about how to design an island for your fantasy world. Welcome to another episode of Just In Time Worlds with your host, Marie Mulaney. If you have not yet done so, please do hit the subscribe button down below. And if you want to join my community of world builders on Discord, there's a link to that down below as well. Okay, let's get cracking. Islands can come in all shapes and sizes, from small, can only support maybe one person, perhaps doesn't even have water, it's just a little sandbar in the middle of nowhere, to the size of Greenland. This being the case, your islands on a fantasy world can be equally diverse. So I'm not going to plunge into the absolute detail of every kind of island. What I aim to do today is to give you some guidelines to think about when you're coming up with your island. One of the first things that you need to consider is how did your island form? Is it the result of an underwater volcano spraying up and creating new land with its ash. In that case, you're probably looking at some fairly unstable land, if the volcano is still active. You're also looking at some rich land. Volcanic ash can be very fertile. A good example of this is the Galapagos Islands off the coast of Ecuador, which have got a fascinating array of wildlife. There are animals that survive there, that survive nowhere else. The marine iguana is found nowhere else in the world. Because these islands were created by volcanoes, but because of the way that the current works, they are on the equator, so they're warm, but they have the Antarctic current coming up from the bottom, creating a much cooler climb, and this has resulted in a strange mixture of animals. Those same currents have brought animals to the islands, but because it is such an isolated island, those animals have become genetically isolate. And so they survive there in a way that we don't see anywhere else. And that is a great asset to a fantasy world builder. It means that if you have a strange animal or a strange plant and you need to put it somewhere special, find yourself an isolated island somewhere that's been created by a volcano or perhaps as the result of an undersea mountain range that forms a series of islands or a single island and put it there. On such an island, you can have dwarfs. So you can have animals that have been genetically selected for smallness. We have found within our own species remains of what looked like hobbits, small people that lived separately on an island. There have been islands where there have been genetically isolated elephants who have been selected for dwarf, for smallness. You can conversely also have islands that have been selected for giantism. So creatures that you have in your world already, but giant. But besides that, you can also put magical resources, magical plants on these islands that survive nowhere else because competition in other areas have destroyed them, have caused them to go extinct, have used up the resources. But here on these islands, they still survive. And that is a great asset to any fantasy world builder. So I spoke about the currents of the Galapagos Islands. And you need to think about that as well. What are the currents that are running to your island? Is it a case of cold currents running to your islands? What about warm currents running to your islands? Also, what have these currents brought? And how long will it be until they bring people? Will people ever find these islands? Or will it be that it's only when people really start putting effort into exploring the ocean that they'll find these places? The Polynesians found Easter Island and Hawaii and they made the whole Polynesian Triangle, but they didn't find the Galapagos Islands. 
that was only discovered way later due to their location and the way that the currents around them work. So give some thought to your currents and what they could bring to your islands. I did speak about volcanoes forming an island. You also need to consider how long ago that was. There are places on the Galapagos Island that look like a hellscape because the volcano sand is still reasonably fresh there. Then there's places that look like paradise because these islands are old and nature has grown over the scars left by the volcano. When an island is fresh up and a volcano has freshly pushed it up, it's going to look like it comes from somewhere on the moon. It will take time for nature to inhabit the island, for plants to be brought to the island via the wind and via the currents, and for it to slowly become more than just a wasteland. If you're going to have a human population on the island, you need to think about water, because they're going to need that, and you need to think about what they do for food. Do they fish out of the lagoon? Is there a massive run of migrating fish that go past the island once a year that your people go and hunt? Is it a case of they grow vegetables on the island itself or do they get vegetables out of the sea in some way? Do they eat seaweed? What do they do for their food and what does that diet look like? Also bear in mind that like with your seafaring communities, the climate of your island is going to make a dramatic difference to what your community wears, where the majority of their life is, the kind of houses that they build. You're not going to see palm frond houses in an island in the Arctic Sea. And you're not going to see people wearing furs in an island in the Pacific Paradise. So think about the climate of your island and the ocean around it. And of course, if your island is an archipelago, is each island different? Are there wars between them? Do they work together? And archipelagos also allow you to explore things like having an adulthood ceremony where a child has to swim between two islands to become an adult or has to sail to a specific point in the archipelago, you know, in a, participating in a race and when they get there they become adults. So you can really lean into that multiple islands when you're building your island community. And those are my thoughts on using islands in your fantasy world, how to build them, what to think about. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of Just In Time Worlds. If you would like to support me in making more of these, please do check out my Ko-fi page or buy my book. And I will see you soon for another episode.